from the chairs at first time worshiping with us. And our announcements are up on the screen. Um, just a reminder that Tuesday, Faith and Richmond will be meeting, and everyone is invited to attend. It's at 645 over in the education building in the fireside room. We have welcome table this week, um, Wednesday. And um, see Jean if you would like to help serve a meal or just come at 11.30 and enjoy the meal. Um, the Minnesota Annual Conference Annual Meeting will be on June 7th and 8th, which is Friday and Saturday this week. Um, Tommy and myself will be going as delegates for New Journey, and Jill and Jean will also be there. And then in the, um, at 11.30, members of the New Connection team will be hosting a workshop on Friday for those attending the annual meeting. So the workshop will highlight what we've been up to and a chance to connect with others who are exploring new ways to be church. Are there any other announcements from the floor? Sit back, listen to our bills ring as they start us in worship.
Fellowship. We gather in the presence of God to encounter love that sets free. Together, we practice courage in resisting evil and rejecting the temptations of complicity and complacency. The Spirit leads us in power and truth. Our faith is placed in love eternal that lifts broken spirits and brings new life from places of ruin. With hope that is neither narrow nor fragile, we come to follow Christ.
to the young community of hope. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love or the spirit that we have in common or any tenderness or sympathy can persuade you at all, then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing that would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit, but everyone is to be humble, value others over yourselves, each of you thinking of the interests of others before your own. Your attitude must be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Christ, through the image of God, did deem equality with God something to be clung to, but instead became completely empty and took on the image of the oppressed humankind, born into the human condition, found in the likeness of a human being. Jesus was thus humbled, obediently accepting death, even death on a cross. Now Kurt will present a reading from Make Me an Instrument of Your Peace by Kent Mirbury.
walls fell to the ground beside me. There in the gloaming we sat, struggling to find a common language with which to communicate. My German was poor but workable. His English was good but long forgotten. In a clumsy mix of our own two tongues, his story came out. He was a judge, well respected in the community. That morning, a young girl had run in front of his car as he was driving to work. There had been no time to stop. He had struck her, killing her instantly. He had been wandering the street, drinking, ever since. I am a judge. He kept saying, I am a judge. How could I have done this? It was if his station in life and claims on respectability should have pr protected him from so horrible of an event. And even more, he felt he had betrayed the trust of an entire community. With my fumbling German, I tried to find words that would calm his spirit. But there was no consolation I could offer. He knew that it was not his fault. He knew that it had been an accident. I keep seeing her in front of me, he sobbed. Why could not I stop? I tried again to speak some words that would matter, but he stopped me. Don't talk, he said. I don't need words. I just need to be near somebody. I stayed with him on that street corner long into the night. He did not wish to go anywhere. He did not wish to talk. Occasionally, he would take my hand. Occasionally, he would be overcome with deep and heaving sobs. But whenever I tried to leave or allow him the privacy of his own grief, he would say no and grab my hand to make me stay. That night, I learned something deep about despair and what it means to offer hope. It is the gift of our presence that the despairing soul needs. No more, no less. When we sit with someone in despair, we are sitting in vigil. We cannot reach their consciousness with ours, nor can we offer consolation that will touch their darkness. Like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, they want only that we should sit and watch with them. Despair is a sickness of the soul. If the despairing soul is to heal, it will do so on its own. The greatest gift we have to offer is our selfless and solitary witness. For when we stand vigil with the despairing spirit more than anything else, we are denying the emptiness into which the spirit wishes to plunge. Again. We are denying the emptiness into which the spirit wishes to plunge. By our presence, we are affirming a worth that the spirit does not feel. We are bearing witness to a possibility in which the spirit does not believe. We are defying the darkness.
years ago, decades ago in fact, I was having a conversation with a young couple and they were a um, very young family and they were struggling about what their place was in church. Because every time they went to church, the church was talking about our responsibility to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to find housing, to take care of the poor. And what they said to me was that they felt like a third person being talked about when they were in the room because they were the family that needed the food. They were the family that needed the clothing. They were the family that was living on Minnesota care. And I got to wondering, have we got it all wrong when we're talking about compassion? Because we always talk as if we're the ones that have everything to give. We always talk as if we're the ones that should fix. We're the ones that should take care of. And while that's true, there's this missing element of the community. It's almost as if we are saying, if you need to be taken care of, you don't belong here. If you need food, you don't belong here. If you need clothing, you don't belong here. Is the unspoken message that we sometimes give in our zeal. So what is compassion? If you go to the root of the word compassion, C-O-M, come, comes from the Latin that means with. Passion comes from the Latin passus, to suffer. Literally, compassion means not to fix, not to heal, not to mend, but to suffer with. To suffer with. And so I go back to that passage we read today, and it talks about humility, and it talks about all being one, all being on one level. And I realize that sometimes in our zeal, we take on this arrogance. And what does it do for us? What does it do to us? Maybe I should say, for those of us who take on this assumption, I think of the judge in the story. The judge in the story had listened to stories like his over and over and over and over and over again and he was a judge and he was well respected and he assumed he would never have something like that experienced in his own life. Never. Because he was a judge. Right? And I don't think that's necessarily an arrogance, it's just a, an attitude of, of the culture. In this world when we are not supposed to ever admit that we are struggling in this world, we're not supposed to ever admit that we are the ones that need help. Pull yourselves up by the bootstraps. And so we walk through lives with these masks on our faces, denying the fullness of who we are, denying our vulnerabilities on our weaknesses, and it eats away at our souls. And then when we do find ourselves in a place of weakness, in a place of pain, in a place of struggle, we don't know what to do with ourselves. Because we're supposed to be the ones that are helping people. We're supposed to be up here. But there's another piece to this. 
and it is for the people who need help. Too often, when we do not suffer with, when we try to fix, when we try to make it all better, when we try to be the hero, we miss the mark. Because until you have suffered with, you do not fully understand the suffering. Until you have looked at that person's world through that person's lens instead of through your own, you will always miss the mark. And I think of how we have done it in issues of equality, whatever those may be. And the dominant culture is always saying, well, we gave them this. I, I remember when I was in grade school, one of my teachers talking about people on the reservation in northern Minnesota. We gave them all those houses, we built them all those houses, and they just let them go to trash. Right? Her idea of what they needed was a house just like hers, that they would keep as just like she kept hers. Because that's what she had been taught what life was about. But don't look through the lens of the other. And I think of computers piled up in South Dakota because people decided the Lakota needed computers. Now, did they have any access to the internet? Maybe, maybe not, depending on where they lived. Did they have any way to get rid of those obsolete computers when they broke down? No. We didn't look at it through their lens. We didn't ask them what they needed. And so we missed the mark often. Right? So, if we could follow the prophet's vision, if we could follow Paul's instruction and choose this humility and choose this, what kind of world could we create if we chose vulnerability in our compassion? That's the question I'm asking today. What are you dreaming about? What does it make you think about? I've gone down the rabbit hole, you know. Any thoughts?
what I've learned is the most important thing is just listen. To listen. It's hard for us to listen. We want to fix it instead. It's not as painful as listening.
morning. Family, friends, acquaintances, strangers. Our thoughts are with Emma, for Emma's girlfriend who has been stricken with a mysterious illness. We hope you know her. We hope you in the light of Christ. We think of our many family and friends who are challenged with physical illness for all those who are struggling with body. We hope we know you know. We hold you. We hold in our hearts Jackie's BFF Tristan and his family. Tristan's service dog died last week. And he'd been part of the family for 15 years. Tristan, we hold you in the light of Christ. And gracious God, we know that more and more people are challenged with mental illness and we hold them and we hope that they know we hold you in the light of Christ. We offer prayers for Tommy's cousin Angie and her mom Ginger. Angie's cancer came back and it has spread. We hope that you know we hold you who are attending the Minnesota Conference annual meeting this weekend as we do the work of this United Church of Christ. We hold you in the light of Christ. Are there any other prayers to be lifted this morning? Gracious God, you have heard our prayers, spoken and unspoken. Hear us now as we pray together. Creator of all that is, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the The last time Jesus was with his disciples, he sat at the table with Peter, who would become the rock of the church, and with Judas, who would betray him. And one and all alike, after, while they were eating, he took this loaf of bread, a simple loaf of bread, and he offered a blessing, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. Just like this bread is broken, my body will be broken. When they had finished eating, he took a cup. And again, paused for a blessing. And he said, drink from this, all of you. In the same way that this cup is poured out, my blood it will be poured out. So whenever you eat this bread, whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. So we call upon the Spirit of the risen Christ to bless this bread, to bless this cup, that we might share in this meal and become the body of Christ. 
Christ for this time and for this place. This table is Christ's table. It's not my table. It's not New Journey United Church of Christ's table. This is Christ's table. And so all of our welcome to come and share in this sacred meal that we might become that body right now, spreading Christ's love in the world.
you make us one body. Bind us together by your spirit, that we might live into your hopes for us, a community centered in Christ, and rich in compassion, commitment, courage, and care. And may it be so. Would you stand and let's sing together? This one is not in my bureau of books. I think you'll catch it.
Go and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen. Thank you.